Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be kind of informal. Um, I have been modifying my Newtonian. I have um, added a mirror mask. I have flopped the inside of the tube. I have painted the edge of the secondary mirror. Um, and I am pretty happy with the results, although I feel like some stuff needs tweaking. So today's video I'm just going to be showing you how I got the primary mirror out, showing you around the modifications that I have done and putting my scope back together and collimating it all being well. Um, because I have got new stuff that I want to use, so primarily this Altair dual band S2 and O3 ultra filter um, that I want to use in combination with my HA O3 filter. Um, but I don't want to use them until I've got the scope pretty much spot on for what I want it. So without further ado, let's get cracking. As per usual, our Luna is very excited about these modifications and Astro work. So first things first, let's remove this primary mirror again. Six screws, I think, or six or seven screws all around the base. They just need to be remo removed and then you can pull out the primary mirror. Okay, so arguably the most important modification done I have done is added this mirror mask, this aperture mask. Um, and what that's doing, it's kind of disguising the mirror clips just a touch. Um, a friend of mine 3D printed this for me so I literally have just attached it via the screw holes um, and yeah and I've also even though it's under the mirror mask I've painted the edge the beveled edge of the primary mirror bit scary doing it but you know we have to do these things and um, yeah I don't know if you can see but I flocked the tube with my uh, with some velour flocking and there is, uh, even though I hoovered it like a crazy person before I put it in there, there is like flocking dust. Um, so I've just been, now that I've just got it out, I'm just using a rocket blower just to blow some of it away. But the most important thing when you're doing this is to ensure the mirror clips aren't too tight. These mirrors will distort if um, the mirror clips are too tight. So what I'm going to do, they're not actually sort of meant to sort of hold it down tightly. They're meant just to sort of stop it falling out. Um, so I can't actually record this bit because I need both hands to do it. But I'm going to check that the mirror clips that I've, you know, tightened down aren't too tight. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to slide a sort of piece of paper under each clip just to make sure, you know, there is space for the mirror to slightly shift or you know just be gently held in place not absolutely tightened down to it within an inch of its life which i have seen before so yeah very important to know do not over tighten your mirror clips good stuff what we're looking at now is the inside of the flopped tube um it's quite dark if i zoom in you can just see the reflection from the secondary. Um, but yeah, I can't really see any light leaks from my focuser. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to. I took some photos of the process of me flocking this tube, and it, there's some real good sort of examples that show the difference it's actually made. Um, so I'll put these in the video. And yeah, one tip I, I've already mentioned it once, but if you're going to flock your tube, make sure you really hoover or lint roller the flocking first i used um you know a, quite a powerful hoover on on mine and it, you know i didn't see any flocking bits coming off it and i've still i'm still getting some on my mirror uh, it's not a problem you know i'm not too fussed but yeah if there's one tip i can do just make sure you get all this excess dust off here first Another thing I did to improve this scope is I painted the edge of this secondary mirror and it's working quite well because 
he can barely see it at the minute but that used to be kind of shiny and um, I used Stuart Semple's black 3.0 to paint that edge uh, and what I'll do now is I'll show a picture um, of the process just so you can see the difference it's actually made but yeah next on the list that I want to do is get some bobs knobs or you know not necessarily bobs knobs I got a real good hint about um, computer building um, using kind of like knurled thumb screws instead they come out a little bit cheaper so yeah I'm planning on getting something like that just to, to sort of aid collimation unfortunately I can't get one of those snazzy CNC spiders because they don't make them for this scope it tends just to be for Skywatcher um, but yeah I'm getting there I feel like I've made some great improvements to this telescope So what I'm going to do now, because I've had the scope to pieces, I'm going to recolumate. Now the Ocal, I feel like it really needs its own video, so I'm just going to kind of like go through this super quick, um, because yeah, I want to go over it in more depth in future. So first things first, I've removed the filter from the filter holder because I don't want it cutting out loads of light. And then I'm going to add another spacer and that's because I like the ocal to be um, positioned at the where the imaging plane would be. So just undo that cap. I'm going to add this spacer. Oops. Butterfingers. And then I'm just going to screw it on where my camera would usually be. Now I have added a tilt adapter in there as well um, and I've had to sort of check my back um, backspace in as well. Highly recommend everybody gets one of these. Very useful. Digital caliper, cheapest chips and helps you get accurate measurements. Um, you can use the Ocal with Android mobile phones, but I'm going to plug it into my laptop. And I'm going to take the cap off the end of the scope. So I've initialised the Ocal. Um, I haven't made any adjustments just yet, and this is what I'm looking at. Um, I've heard of sort of mixed guidance on whether people use the centre offset or not. I do. It's given me good results. So yeah, I'm sticking with it. First thing I've done is fit the green um, circle to the end of the draw tube and the second thing I'm going to do is fit the, the red circle as best as I can to make sure my secondary mirror is you know, fully aligned with um, the focuser tube and kind of a perfect circle. I'm not very good at explaining things but as you can see I'm a little bit off. I'm not too worried, manufacturing differences and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna change that size first. I'm gonna make it smaller. And as you can see, I the secondary mirror just needs to move a tiny little bit. So if I zoom in even further, you can see there's a kind of tiny little edge there. And it just, it, it needs to move minuscule amount so that's what I'm going to do now but I, while I move it I also want to make sure that that um, I can still see the mirror clips just a little bit I don't want the primary to move kind of out of view The goal is for that primary to stay in that blue circle. Might have to fast forward this for you because it's a boring bit. So I'm kind of happy, kind of centred on the secondary. But now I just need to bring that primary back in. I really rate the Ocal um, and that's because it's really helped me with my neck injury that I don't have to be kind of bent over the 
focus tube to make adjustments I can kind of just see it on the computer bit fiddly but we're getting there There we go. I'm kind of happy with that. My secondary might be slightly off, just a touch, but I'm not too worried. It's literally a flat piece of glass um, to re reflect light. It's not like the primary mirror, which you know is has you know is parabolic or whatever. So let me just move this. So now. Now I'm happy with the centering of my secondary and the kind of the primary. Now I'm going to enable the crosshairs. Um, and can you see the sort of black dot of the Ocal lens is not quite aligned with those crosshairs. So what I'm going to do now is adjust the collimation screws at the back of the telescope to bring that in line. I'm trying to do this whilst videoing is a little bit awkward, but never let it be said that I don't show you guys all the best kind of stuff. screws not too much though don't want it to shift collimation and there we go that is one collimated telescope so yeah that ocal is pretty damn good so collimated I'm just going to put everything back together. Um, this is my 26C camera. Let me zoom out a little bit. Wow, a bit close. Um, I've been asked to do a review on this, so I will be at some point. Um, I had a little, I felt like I had a bit of tilt at one side, but I'm hoping I've kind of rectified that now. But if not, I have got a tilt adapter in here that I can use to tweak. But I, I just need some clear skies. Um, I am thinking about buying an Altair um, 533 Protec because I think the sensor size, which is smaller and square, um, would be a better fit for this telescope. Um, you, see, you see the 2016 combination with the Nexus reducer, such a big sensor with that uh, and such a sort of fast scope combination. It literally shows up every little sort of misalignment, collimation issue, tilt issue. It's just a nightmare. It's a good job I love it really, but I love this camera and the 533 is the same kind of pixel size. Um, it, it is 14 bit, whereas this is 16 bit, sadly. But yeah, I've seen some really good results with it. So I'm actually thinking about buying one. Um, however, I am saving for my wedding at the minute, so it depends what the bank manager says. And I don't actually mean the actual bank manager when I say that. You guys know who I'm referring to, don't you? <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, as always, thanks for watching. And let me know what you guys want to see. I'm doing my videos completely differently this time around. Um, yeah, no stress. And hopefully I'll do a proper sort of how-to in-depth video on the Ocal at some point because I love it. 
best collimation aid I've bought. So yeah, see you soon. So in doing that whole video on my posh camera, I forgot my best modification, well, one of the best modifications to that telescope. It has a bit of light leakage at the back end. So to solve that, I just bought a shower cap and this one was like three pound off Amazon. It's got unicorns on it. I can wear it in the shower if I need to. And yeah, it stops all the light leakage. So yeah, watch this space um, for the results of these modifications. I'll show you an image now that I took sort of after I did the mods, but before this tweak. Um, I'm happy with the contrast. It's just that little sort of flare on the one side that I'm not, not happy with, but we'll see how it goes. And hopefully I'll be able to get imaging properly again soon. Thanks.